Short stories suck. Or at least they seem like they do until you know how to write them. They're so short. Nailing the ending is so hard. There's not enough time to get to know a character. These are all things I thought when I first started writing short fiction. What if I told you writing a short story doesn't have to be hard? Here's my four step process for writing a killer short story. A short story can be broken down into four basic parts. Number one, character and particular predicament. Number two, event unrolls that disrupts this predicament. Number three, event peaks and causes. Number four, a final revelation that changes that predicament. One, character in a particular predicament. You can't have a short story without a character. I'm focusing on human characters, but your character can be an animal or a setting or whatever you want it to be. Short stories occur because of a problem or predicament. The predicament is the heart of your story. It is why your character is telling this story at this time. Predicaments are conflicts and conflicts can be internal or external, AKA your predicament can be a character flaw versus a situation or vice versa. This predicament will be linked by your theme. But hold on, what is a theme? A theme is the unspoken core idea your story explores. It's usually related to the change your character makes at the end of the story. So what's an example of a character in a particular predicament? So this is from my short story, Jasmine's Brows and Cuts, which you can read for free on the Puritan. I'll link it in the description. If you don't want to read it before continuing this video, here's the log line. An eyebrow waxer questions her ideology on beauty standards when a bold woman named Sada becomes the first client of her at-home salon. So what's Jasmine? Jasmine's predicament. Well, Jasmine lost her job. Because she lost her job, she starts an at-home eyebrow waxing business. She does this because she likes making people feel beautiful as she herself struggles with her body image. Here, the predicament is highlighted in yellow. The link to the theme, on the other hand, is blue. Two event unrolls that disrupts this predicament. Now that you've identified a character and their predicament, you need to identify an event that disrupts this predicament. This disruption causes the story to actually happen, AKA unroll on the page. This disruptive event is also known as the inciting incident. So what's an example of a disruptive event? In this case, Sada, a confident woman a similar age to Jasmine becomes the first client of her at-home salon. If Sada didn't show up in the story, it wouldn't occur at all. Yeah, okay. Okay, but what's disruptive about Sada's presence? Well, she's very confident and social, all things Jasmine's been taught not to be. Most importantly, she's Jasmine's age, and Jasmine's been taught that women in their 30s can't be confident. Here's also where I leave you with a special note. A disruptive event can be internal, but more often than not is an external conflict that exacerbates the internal conflict. Three, event peaks. This is the story's climax. It's the moment the character's predicament starts to shift due to the disruptive event. Think of this like an avalanche. Everything starts falling apart to create something new. At the end of the day, the event peaking is the tipping point of your short story. A change, whether that's progression for your character or regression, will occur because of this moment. So what's an example of an event peaking? Well, Sada's confidence increasingly challenges the worldview Jasmine's mother taught her about beauty standards. Jasmine's confused because Sada, in her opinion, is everything she's not supposed to be. But at the same time, Sada's still totally successful despite going against what Jasmine's mother taught her about beauty standards. This leads to Jasmine asking Sada if she ever feels old. Four. A final revelation changes the predicament. This is a step a lot of newbie short story writers, including myself, mess up. The ending of a short story is so important because it recontextualizes everything else that came before. It essentially signals to the reader what the story was about. This can be very daunting if you don't know where to start, but the answer is simple. All you need is for your character to make a revelation that changes their positioning on their original predicament. This revelation will be the direct aftermath of the event peak. Finally, what's an example of a final revelation? Sada's flabbergasted response to Jasmine calling herself old really gets Jasmine thinking. Jasmine dips into internal reflection and has a moment where her previous worldview is challenged. She returns on the other side, changed. I'm going to read the ending of Jasmine's browsing cuts to illustrate this point. Jasmine turns for the warmer and quickly pulls up a glop of wax on the popsicle stick. She turns it around, around, around. She'd always thought she'd like to make people beautiful like she does now to Sada. She liked the idea of changing someone's face so they'd be surprised by the reflection they'd see in the mirror. As she lays the wax down between Sada's brows, she tries to remember the last time she felt beautiful, the last time she felt the type of young her mother wanted her to remain, untouchable. Maybe it was this morning, brushing her teeth in the mirror, 
Maybe it was five years ago, sitting alone at her New Year's party, sporting a new lipstick color. As she twirls the wax on the popsicle stick, she catches a glimpse of her face in her makeup mirror's reflection. She can hear her mother now, commenting on how she should get some rest, try Olay, tea bags, a cold compress every morning. But then there's Sada's voice coming from the chair. I know what that's like, she says, and closes her eyes as Jasmine holds her skin taut. But when you get to a certain age, you've got to make a choice. It's either you choose you or get eaten by wolves, and I'm not a big fan of wolves. Jasmine looks at herself again. Something softens in her face, or maybe it's just the way the LEDs hit her jaw. But for a moment, a slow, honeyed moment, she's tinged gold. If you're at home and you're like, I don't get it, what's the change? Let me break it down. The change in this story is the moment when Jasmine sees her reflection in the mirror and notices she's tinged gold. This indicates that for once, she looks at herself and isn't seeing her mother's criticism, but someone new and glowing full of possibility. But Rachel, my character isn't supposed to change. If this is you, listen closely. If you're writing a short story believing your character doesn't change, this might not be as true as you think. Are you sure the character doesn't change at all or do they actually regress? That's another type of change. Really take a moment to think of who your character is at the start of the story and what happens over the course of the story that might change them. Perhaps the events of the story don't change your character positively, but negatively. At the end of the day, short stories are little nuggets of writing that require change. There are of course exceptions, but if you're just starting out, I wouldn't recommend starting out with a story where a character doesn't change at all on the first go. If your character isn't changing, you might need to revisit your original idea and ensure the events in the story do incur some kind of change, whether that's positive or negative. So that's it. Now you know how to write a short story. I honestly wish I had this guide when I first started writing short fiction. Short stories are a mystery, but not anymore. What's your favorite short story? I'll link a list of my favorites that you can read online in the description. So go forth and write a short story. You got this. Okay.